Oh, Jesus. So this is the battery case kit and it's pretty cool. Um, as you can see, this will fit 70 cells. So you can get a 14S 5P configuration for a 52 volt battery. And then whatever the milliamp hours of your each individual cell is times five. So we have apparently 4.5 amp hour cells here, according to the label here, even though, sorry, 4.8 amp hour cells. So that means that we'll have a 52 volt, 24 amp hour battery once we're done with it. This part here slides off, and this is what mounts to the down tube of the battery. These terminals are what make contact in order to connect the battery to the controller, which is what this is gonna be permanently affixed to the bike and connected to. I gotta say these are super, super solid. I'm thoroughly impressed with the build quality on this. So there's a nut here on the other side. The reason I want to unscrew it is to show how you're able to solder onto this. So right here are the points that you solder onto. You have your positive and you have your negative. Everything's labeled here and also here so you don't lose track of positive and negative. And then there's a hole. That's where your wires are going to come out of and go to your controller. I'm wondering, do two 8 amp wires fit through that hole? Not really. This could be a problem. I think I'm going to have to order 10 gauge wire instead of this 8 gauge because I, I can't fit these two 8 gauge wires through it. Albeit this 8 gauge wire has a very thick insulation because it's designed for cars. So I'm going to look for a 10 gauge wire that also has a thinner insulation. On top of that, it looks like these terminals right here. Although these look okay to solder onto with 8 gauge. Over here, I'm not so sure. So I think 10 gauge is just gonna be a lot easier to work with. I'm basically just gonna run 10 gauge wire inside the battery to the terminals and then from the terminals to that hole. And then this hole will come out and then be like a XT90 connector and it will connect to another XT90 connector that uses H eight gauge wire to the controller. You put that back on there. Grab that screw and put it where that nut is. And it's assembled again. It looks like this also has two screws, which you can unscrew it with for when you're soldering it. This case has like a groove all the way through it a little slot and this has a raised piece in the middle so that when you connect the two they perfectly line up which is very very nice here's the cell holders mind you these cell holders are 21.7 millimeters so that is better when you're dealing with the larger style of 21700s because as you can see these cells i have here about 21.3 millimeters if you use P42A or P45B cells, they will be 21.7 millimeters and it'll be press fit into here. The cells that I'm using are 21.2 and as you can see, they have some play. I don't think it'll be too big a deal. It's not ideal, but you know, I really can't do anything at this point. I got the cells, I got the cell holders. I'm gonna use it. At least I know for next time and you watching this, if you plan to use this same case, know that you should stick with uh, the larger 21700s that are like 21.5 millimeters and up instead of these 21.2 millimeters diameter 21700s this is super super cool this is an led display a battery indicator when you hit that button it'll show it'll light up these leds here indicating how much charge is left on the battery and this mounts right here it has some slots right there to slide into the case that's actually funny it comes with those screw holes but you just push it into place that can't be right so there's a little rubber button that's included that has to go in first 
once that goes in, you put this in. And it just slides into place. There's no screwing required. You'll have to line up that button behind the rubber. So there might be a little bit of finagling, but it's honestly really nice. And the friction hold is really good. Now here's one thing I was wondering, which is where does the BMS fit in this case? Because you gotta have a BMS, maybe a card. All right, now it's nice, nice and flush. Maybe not on this side. All right, now it's nice and flush on both sides. So. millimeters your BMS should be no thicker than 13 millimeters and width wise about 86 millimeters I would say 80 just to be safe so that's 80 by 13 by I mean this is really long this way doesn't really matter but you know 13 millimeters thick 80 millimeters wide and pretty long like around 150 millimeters is how big your BMS can be that answers that question in case you're wondering this does use a DC jack charging port the battery comes with a lock and a set of keys which is awesome it also comes with a power switch I don't know if I'm gonna actually use the power switch but it's there and it looks like this right here is a dust cover for the charging port and I ordered the pack with all the nickel strips I looked around and the, there's a lot of diagrams for the 48 volt assortment the 13s 5p but I didn't find any for the 14s 5p I think it's this but it doesn't tell you which one's positive and which one's negative but I want to assemble it out before I go forth with the battery I want to make sure I can figure out the assortment now before getting lost later with all the batteries already in place so this looks like a terminal piece. Most of these pieces are the same. It's this shape. This is another terminal piece. This is a unique long piece that got bent during shipping, but honestly that's to be expected. It's such a thin material. It's going to get jostled around by these guys. Uh, you could just bend it back into shape. It looks like there are eight unique shapes and most of them are this one. I don't think I have this assortment because I don't have this piece right here. Um, I don't know. Yeah, this is totally different. I think that I finally cracked the code. So here are the main facts regarding this battery. You cannot use a BMS that is thicker than 13 millimeters, wider than 80 millimeters, and longer than approximately 150 millimeters. The BMS sits here at the top of the case. For the 14S 5P configuration, you don't get a diagram. I figured it out. I'm going to show a picture. Use it if you need it. This comes with This comes with its own set of keys, a battery status LED indicator, an on-off switch, a dust cover for the charger, a standard DC jack charging port. It comes with the part that actually attaches to the frame of your bike as well. The connections here are soldered. These connections are very well done. You have all your negatives on one side and all your positives on the other. So is this one. So is this one. So is this one. This one's not ideal. Ideally, you want to double up on the nickel between these terminals and these terminals. These terminals, these terminals. Because there's a very short area right here. A very short cross section for the current to flow through. This could potentially be a hot spot. Well, whereas in this connector, you have them all evenly split so that the cross section between the two negatives and positives are pretty long. Right there, you have a hot spot. You're going to need to add extra nickel. This is fine because it's a terminal. This is also fine because it's a terminal. And this one I think is okay too. This one is seriously problematic. You have all your negatives on one side and then all your positives on the other side. So the cross section between the two sides is very, very small. If you're going to use this, definitely 
add a layer of nickel between here, 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 and here. So you'll have one nickel strip there, one nickel strip there, one nickel strip there, and the rest of these are fine. This one's a little problematic. Maybe you could add an extra nickel strip there. I gotta say that for $50 for this thing, you really cannot go wrong. The build quality is so much better than I expected. Um, you gotta be careful with the cell holders here because they're for 21.7, 21.5 millimeter diameter, 21700s. If you have the smaller style, which is 21.2 millimeters, and you insert them here, there will be a little bit of play. If you order the 14S 5P configuration, there's absolutely no documentation, but I figured it out, so I'm gonna put it on the screen. The bracket right here that mounts to the tube is super, super solid. I cannot see this breaking due to force. Comes with an LED indicator, comes with the on off switch, comes with the dust cover for the charging port, comes with keys and a lock. Honestly, you get a really great deal. If you're building e-bikes from existing bike frames, this is perfect if you want to build your own battery from 21700 cells. The only, only problem is they just don't have enough documentation. Uh, I couldn't find any anywhere, at least on AliExpress or uh, Google, but I think I laid out some of the most important facts here. Like I said, I'm highly impressed with this entire kit. And if you want to build a 52 volt battery from 21700 cells and mount it on a bike frame, this is perfect. One thing I forgot to mention is that if your BMS is smaller than 50 millimeters and you can just insert it between those two brackets, you have an additional an additional two millimeters of thickness allowed for your BMS, but that's only if it can slide into here. That might seem insignificant, but that's actually perfect for me at least. This Dolly BMS, and I don't know why I just really like Dolly BMS, it's 14 millimeters, which would have been terrible because I said you can't have it bigger than 13 millimeter, but because it's less than 50 millimeters in width, it'll actually go into that bracket and that'll allow it to sink one or two millimeters, just enough to fit at the bottom of the battery pack. So basically, the BMS cannot be thicker than 13 millimeters. However, if it's less than 50 millimeters wide and it can fit in that bracket, then your BMS can be up to 15 millimeters. One last thing I forgot to mention that I'm realizing now as I'm editing is uh, you might want to know what the thickness of this nickel is, and I can't tell you because my calipers are not precise enough, but it ranges between 0.1 and 0.2 when I squeeze, so I think it's a 0.15 millimeter thick uh, nickel sheet. And another thing you might be wondering is how wide it is. It is 11 millimeters wide. So this means that if you're going to double up on the nickel, like I said to, you should probably order a 10 millimeter by 0.15 millimeter uh, nickel. And just this is my opinion, but if you're going to order this, maybe just go for the 48 volt version with the nickel strips. I wanted to get the 52 volt version because I didn't want to be missing out on any potential cells since there are 70 places. So a 14 S 5P will work, but I think the 13 S 5P kit is so much better. And not just that, but a lot of the smaller form factor BMSs are designed for 13S, but not 14S. 13S is kind of the limit of where most small form factor BMSs will stop. So I think overall, you're just going to have a better time if you go with the 48 volt version instead of the 52 volt version like I did. And that's really it. The biggest bottleneck here for like a high output pack is the size of the BMS because this isn't going to allow for a very big BMS and also the wire gauge used at the terminals since you're really not going to be able to use more than eight gauge wire inside the battery pack. If you try really hard maybe you could get it down to six gauge but eight gauge is already hard enough. <clears throat>